Welcome American Truckers, Trucking with Old Snapper. And I'm your host, Old Snapper. Let's take a ride here across the... I got some clips here from several different states. We'll take a ride here across them. While I chit-chat with y'all, tell y'all about this horrible, horrible time, man, I had at Swift Transportation. Well, back in 2005, I decided it was fall of 2005, I decided I wanted to be a truck driver. You know, it was an easy job, looked easy, beat the hell out of working in the refineries, you know, so I just uh, lost my job where I was at. I was living up in Oak Cliff up in Dallas, south side of Dallas, and uh, signed, I called around and Swift hired me, or they didn't hire me, they, they, they offered me a truck driving school and all that. So I haul, I haul tail, I go down to San Antonio, Texas. And uh, gonna go through their truck driving school there in San Antonio. Put me up in a hotel with another guy, two of us in there roommating. And uh, everything was going good. You spend the first week going through all these classes uh, back then. I don't know how they do it now. But learning, you know, I didn't have a permit or anything. All I had was a regular driver's license. So, spent the first week going through all these classes, doing all this. Uh, school work and taking physicals and all that kind of all that kind of good stuff well it came time the end of the week friday we went to go take our it was either friday or a monday or the next monday i don't remember which but we went to go take our uh, test for our permits so we could start working out there in the in the yard or whatever learning how to drive a truck well we go into the driver's license office and uh you know, we're all waiting in line, and it's a long line. You got all of us there from school. We literally went up there in a bus, but uh, it was a long line. When it came my turn, I get up there. I don't think nothing of it, you know. I hand the lady all the paperwork that they had given me at a at sort of school. She tells me to look in this little eye thing that's right there on the on the desk. Poke your head against it, and it lights up, and then you read off whatever you see, right? didn't have my head in there but maybe three four seconds I lift my head up off that thing there's a state trooper standing right to my left I still don't think nothing of it because they got state troopers in them driver's license offices in Texas so I still don't think nothing of it and uh, she turns around and she says uh, have you ever been to Oregon I said yeah yeah I've been to Oregon before I've been there several years prior before that and uh she says, well, you have a suspended license in Oregon. I said, that's impossible. I've never had a license in Oregon, which was true. I had never gone down and got a license in Oregon. <clears throat> well, it turns out Oregon, I got a ticket up there on my Texas license. I never went and got an Oregon license. I lived up there about a year and a half. And uh, what Oregon did was they issued me an Oregon license number and then suspended it. You know, so that's what happened there. But that was turning out to be the least of my problems. Because I, I turn around at that point, I'm going to walk out. I'm like, oh, crap, I don't qualify. So I guess I got to go to the house, you know. I turn around thinking about getting my stuff out of the hotel room, shooting somebody a phone call. San Antonio is only about an hour and a half from where I live, right? I turn. I start to walk off. I don't get two steps, and that state trooper grabs my arm. And he calls me by name and he says, but I need to talk to you for a minute. I thought, oh crap, man, this ain't never good. You know, the state trooper needs to talk to me. It's, it's got to be more than a suspended license in Oregon, right? So he takes me around to the back. He's got me in the hall. He says, look, you got a couple warrants out of Montgomery County. And I was like, oh crap, you know. And uh, he says they're old. He said, I got to call and verify them. He said, they're pretty old. He said, but uh, we're going to take you back here and put you in this little room while I call and verify them. If, if, if they clear out, then I'm just going to go ahead and let you go. But uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens from there. So, all right. So he takes me back there. He puts me in this little room. And all I got is, is what I came in with, that paperwork and my jacket. And I think he even took my paperwork from me. So I think I just got my jacket. It was time of year. It was fall. It was cool in the morning, warm in the afternoons. Those of y'all live in the South know what I'm talking about. I'm sitting on this bench and I'm tripping. You know, I'm running everything through my head, you know. 
I hadn't lived in Montgomery County in quite a few years since even before going to Oregon. I hadn't lived in Montgomery County since way back. And and it was at a time in my life when I was doing a lot of things. So, you know, you're you're wondering what the warrant is. And, and laws, laws, they won't always tell you what the warrant is, you know. Um, and I don't know. I guess that's part of the game they play or whatever. And you don't really want to ask. I always try to play it cool until I until I hear it, you know, because I don't want to seem guilty if it's something I got to fight. Long story, long story. But anyway, probably thirty minutes goes by, and it, and I don't know, man. When you're sitting there waiting on news for thirty minutes, thirty minutes seems like thirty years. It's a long time. He opens up the door. I go to stand up. He says, "Now have a seat." I said, "Oh crap." He said, the warrant's verified. You got two of them. Uh, we're going to wait on the sheriff's department to come pick you up or whoever whoever comes around. I said, all right. So I sat back down with my jacket. Now I know I'm going to jail. And this is, I didn't have a cell phone. I think cell phones were out at that time, but I didn't have one. And uh, I'm playing with, playing with the zipper on my jacket and fiddling and thinking. I still don't know what the charge is, but I know I'm going to jail few minutes goes by however long it was I think it was a little bit but these two uh, marshals show up and now I'm really chirping you know all crap man they then sent two marshals down here to escort me to the county jail now I really am wondering what these charges are you know and uh, they cuff me up they're bringing me out and uh, one of the marshals asked he said do you want me to put this uh, jacket you want me to lay this jacket over your cuffs I said, it don't matter everybody knows where i'm going they saw the they, they done saw that cop pull me out of there they know they know what the deal is so he escorts me they escort me back out they put me in this unmarked little red like uh chevy cavalier or something like that it wasn't it wasn't even a cop car put me in this little red car maybe a ford focus i don't know they run me up to the city jail where it, where they have the intake at and uh, in, in San Antonio, you first go to this city jail where they have intake, and it's a bunch of cages. And you'll see a judge from there, and then they'll tell you what your charges are and whether you're going to get bail or not. They'll set your bail and then, or release you, whatever they're going to do. And then if they hold you, then you go back and you get in a different cage with a bunch of other people that are being held, and then you wait for transfer to the county jail. Well getting in i get in that first cage i still don't know what my charges are and i'm in there with about 30 people it's hot you know and it's like a bullpen and you got all these cages in there and you got this uh center deal where they kind of watch all the cages it's like a big gymnasium i guess how you could describe it with all these cages going around in it well they pull they finally pull me and four or five other people they shackle us all up you know head to toe shackle us together March us down through all these halls. We go and we see uh, see this judge, this lady. Well, it turns out I got two Class B misdemeanors. You know, so I'm I'm signed a sigh of relief. Misdemeanor ain't nothing. Class B misdemeanor really ain't nothing. So I ain't worried about it. I think I'm going home. Well, then she tells me she says, but no, since your warrants are from out of county, and the county wants to hold, and the county your warrants are out of wants to hold you. And so they come get you, can't release you. Well, it ended up delaying me, long story short, ended up delaying me getting my CDL for another three years. And uh, I never did go back to SWIFT. You know, when I, when I came back into the industry, SWIFT wasn't where I wanted to go. And the biggest part of the reason that I didn't go back to SWIFT was the way we were treated when we were in class at SWIFT. SWIFT let us know from day one right off the rip that we were there but we were not hired we were not employees yet we were potential employees or whatever you want to call it but we were not employees yet I mean like on day one I remember this little short Hispanic guy stood up in front of the class and he said how many of y'all in here are employed we all raised our hand you know you're under the impression the truck company brought you in here you're employed he said incorrect unless you are employed somewhere else you're not employed Swift has not hired you yet. I mean, they they talked to us like dogs. To be be straight up with you, I didn't like it. 
I didn't appreciate the way it was. It was very much a uh, cattle herding facility. I didn't care for it, so I never went back. When I, when I finally came back into trucking three years later and actually got my CDL and all that, I went through Stevens Transport. But moral of this story, fellas, these trucking companies do not run all your information. They don't run much of anything. So you need to make sure if you're going if you're going to orientation or you're going to a trucking school or you're whatever, you need to make sure that your stuff is straight before you get there. All right. They don't run a lot of that stuff. Swift didn't run none of my stuff. Otherwise, they'd have known I had a suspended license in Oregon and two warrants. And here's the crazy part. The warrants, I didn't even think nothing of. I had been to jail several times since those warrants were originally issued and this point that I was in uh, San Antonio. But for whatever reason, they either didn't come up or they were, maybe that county told that county, no, just let him go, we'll get him later, whatever. But whenever it came to San Antonio, it had been so long, they didn't want to let it go. So they wanted to hold me until Montgomery County could come get me. You know, so you need to make sure your stuff is straight. <clears throat> I don't agree with it. I think these trucking companies should know paperwork wise that whether you're good or not before you get there. I can understand a physical and drug test and all that, but they should know paperwork wise before you get there whether you're good or not. Even later on when I finally came into the industry at Stevens Transport, Stevens Transport didn't. I wasn't hired at Stevens Transport until I completed the school. You know, the school was three weeks long. Uh, first week was classroom, just like Swift. Second week, Bob telling learning how to shift. Back then, we were in manuals. And then the third week, you practiced out on the road, and then you went and took your, your permit test. It was after you took your permit test that you went and saw this lady down in the office, and then you got hired at that point. You weren't an employee before that point. But just something to keep in mind. And that's my nightmare story from Swift Transportation. Wasn't really Swift's fault me going to jail, but I'm kind of thankful I did, to be honest with you, because all these years later, seeing Swift out here on the road, I'm sure glad I didn't go all the way through with that. But y'all stay safe, stay out of trouble, be good to one another. Remember, we are all family, even if we are dysfunctional. And keep trucking.